Many cops are unaware that most citizens know their civil rights and are surprised when people stand up to them and refuse to let them inflate their egos. Today we're talking about cops who got caught with no way out because they overdid their aggressive behavior. From a cop who thought he could decide who could sleep in whose house to a cop who almost arrested a man for filming in public. Let's get into the video. Have cops ever broken into your house and asked you to prove that you live there? It sounds extreme, but that's exactly what happened to this woman. Some cops waited outside her apartment door and without explaining why they were there, they started asking her to provide proof that she lived there. The woman opened the door to show them that she had a key and that her belongings were inside, but that wasn't enough for the cops. Right after, they demanded to see her ID. The woman refused to show her ID without an explanation from the cops about why they were there. One of the cops then explained they got a call saying a male student was sleeping in her apartment when he shouldn't be. First of all, since when do cops care about who sleeps with whom? And who decided he shouldn't be there? He's an adult. He has the right to sleep wherever he wants. I have absolute right to document. You don't have to I'm not taking your picture. This is this is Facebook Live. Here's what we're gonna do. That's fine. I need to go back to the 12th floor That's to finish fine. writing my paper. What's uh? You got your ID on you? Yeah, I do. All right, can we see that? Why? Because we got a police call for you. Okay, let me open my apartment for you, so that you can see that I belong here. I don't think there's a need for you to be here. I think you probably need to commit her to an institution. That's the only like use you have for being here. Okay, great. I need to get back to the 12th floor. I gotta write my paper. We just have your ID now. Why? I just explained to you. We have a police call for you. You just said that if you prove that I live here, Correct. you would leave. Yep. So okay, I just ID? opened. I just opened the door to my apartment. That's fine. I, I can see that. Okay. Thank so you for watching ID? that. Why? So we can verify who you are, and we'll get out of your hair. How's that? Sound good? It'll be over just like that. I'm gonna think about. I'm gonna think about whether I want to show that to you or not. But I, I really don't. No, there's a justification for you even actually being in the building. I think when someone... No, I'm trying to decide if I even want to do that because I don't understand the justification for you actually being here. I think when someone mental calls the police for no reason, you guys should just tell them to, you know, go to an institution. Well, I need her too. You can understand from our perspective. Have I ever met you before? No. I've never met her before either. So she called us and said there's somebody that appeared that they weren't supposed to be where they were supposed to be. Okay. I don't know anybody from anybody, so I'm here to just make sure you have, you're supposed to be here, mm -hmm. make sure she's supposed to be here, and then we get out of your hair. <laughs> if you can understand where we're coming from, thank you very much. Do you, do you mind if I take it out and give, it, give your wallet back? Okay, great. Take that. I was sleeping in the common room and she comes in and turns away. The cops made a mistake by coming in the first place. They should have just told the person who called them to calm down and not bother them with such nonsense. Instead, the cops saw it as a chance to boost their egos and decided to show up and take advantage of the situation. The young woman explained to the cops that her friend was in the apartment and she remembered who had called them. It was her elderly neighbor who was scared of her friend because he was a different skin color. This neighbor had already called the cops once before for the same reason. The previous time, the cops were more professional. After the woman had explained the situation, they apologized and left, but not these cops. They insisted on identifying the woman, even though she hadn't done anything wrong, and neither had her friend. And she's like, why are you sleeping here? You're not supposed to be sleeping here. I'm going to call the police on you. So, that was it. I came to use the bathroom. I just came down to use the bathroom. I didn't walk out because of that. But she called the police on my friend about three months ago. The university knows that she's unstable and she's still here. Well, this is my first time actually meeting her in person, but I know that she's the one who called the police on my friend. What she called the police on your friend? Because he was in the stairwell and he was black. Great, thank you. If you want to put that over there, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah. All right, you just sit for us. Right. Why? Because we're going to run her information, make sure everything comes back correct. Is it, did you do this for her as well? Uh, the officer's worked with her. I'm sure she is. That's pretty much what we did. Because you guys didn't do this last time that you guys were called. I wasn't here last time. Okay. What happened last time? Last time. Okay. She did the same thing because my friend was in the stairwell. 
and he was black. That doesn't sound right. Well, it doesn't sound right that I'm sitting here with you and I should be writing my paper either. So I don't understand why I'm still here. Who exactly are you waiting to hear from? Our dispatch. On what exactly? I just explained to you. We run your information through our dispatch. They come back to us. And say what? And say you're all clear. And and what does all clear mean? It means that you're verified that you live here, that you're supposed to be where you're supposed to be. Like I said, I've never seen you before. We've never met. So I understand you have a key. Show me your ID. Everything looks good to me. Our partner is with the uh, other female, and uh, once we talk to her, then we'll be out of your hair, just like I stated in the beginning. Okay. Sound good? No, but I'm here. The woman asked the cops if they took the ID from her neighbor, since she was actually the instigator in this story, as she had given a false report to the cops. Isn't that enough for them to talk to her, too? In the end, the cops pressured the young woman so much that she had no choice but to give them her name and date of birth. Imagine being in your own home and suddenly being confronted by cops who are demanding proof that you belong there. It's a stressful and scary situation all because of a neighbor's prejudice. This woman showed remarkable composure, but the situation highlighted how sometimes, instead of protecting and serving, the cops can misuse their authority and cause unnecessary stress and fear. But let's see what happened next. Huh? Lola Dan. And what's your date of birth? 6583. Six, yeah, that wasn't the correct CPI. I may even have this conversation right now. I'm sorry. That's fine. <clears throat> and what was your date of birth again? 83 was the year, but what was it? 85? 65. 65. Six, these cops got everything they wanted, but if you thought they'd leave, you were wrong. Some cops really don't know when to stop. Now, one of them wanted to know how the woman handled the situation the first time and what exactly had happened. He was trying to create a story where there wasn't just a coincidence that the cops came to her address twice for the same issue. Was it really hard for them to believe that this woman just had a crazy neighbor? After a while, more cops arrived as backup, as if the ones already there weren't enough. From the young woman's voice, you can hear how uncomfortable and scared she was, and who could blame her? Imagine if something like this happened to you, you wouldn't be jumping for joy. A new cop who arrived seemed friendly at first, but that quickly changed when he started questioning the young woman about what she did. It turned out that she was also a student, and that a friend from the university had just come over to work on a project with her. However, the cop claimed that they were not bothering her and were just doing their job. Well, this definitely seemed like harassment, and the fact that the cop felt the need to say it wasn't spoke volumes about what they were doing there. I don't want to talk about it. I deserve to be here. I pay tuition like everybody else. I'm not going to justify my existence here. I'm not even going to, it's not even a conversation. She needs to be put into an institution so that she can stop harassing people. That's it. That's the only thing I'm interested in talking about right now. 
So this isn't the first time? I mentioned that to you in the beginning. This is the second time? This is the second time I personally experienced her psychosis. I don't know about other people. What happened in person? I think... Four cops, you guys. Were you sitting up there? Yeah. Okay. So that's all your stuff up there? Yeah. Okay. The first name is the OLO. Correct? Your first name is O. Yes. Hi, no. Sorry, Andy. How you doing? Hello, Vadi. Hey. So are you a Yale student? Of course I'm a Yale student. How else would I, I get in here? I'm a Yale student. I was just asking. Okay, well, you have three so other cops here. here well, this is protocol. And I'm the supervisor, so it's going to be okay. <laughs> I know and it's going to be okay. I know I'm not in trouble. My ancestors built this university. I know I'm not in trouble. Okay, well, I'm not going to be harassed because that's exactly what it is. I'm writing a paper. I have a paper due two days ago. Yeah, I understand that, but you should understand by now that there's actually, if you've actually spoken to her, it shouldn't take that long to understand that there's nothing going on. So why are you guys still here? So it's two people that have special right now. So have you one, that's one that's like mentally healthy and one that's I, I don't psycho. Know, I, I don't okay. know that. Okay. I, I can't make that determination. I'm not a professional like that. That's fine. What I can tell you is that we're going to do our job. All right. You're not being harassed. I we're am just going to get down to the bottom of it. No, you're not. What's the the bottom of what? The bottom of, of the fact that I was like. Then the cop tried to act like the good guy and told her everything would be fine. Well, of course, everything would be fine because she hadn't done anything wrong. Who do these cops think they are? This new cop was actually a supervisor, adding a new layer to the situation. It's no wonder the other cops behave this way without a good supervisor to guide them. You know what the worst part is? This supervisor argued with the young woman, saying the law gave them, the cops, the right to decide who could sleep with whom and to ban someone from entering a building. Can you imagine? It seems like someone had a very high opinion of themselves. The young woman stood her ground, even though she was clearly shaken. She knew she hadn't done anything wrong, and neither had her friend. But the cops just kept pushing and pushing, making her feel like a criminal in her own home. They were supposed to protect and serve. But instead, they made her feel unsafe and harassed. I was like in the, in the common room doing a paper and sleeping. Yeah, so what happened to you? got into a... Uh, no, I was no. sleeping, and she, came, she comes in there. No, I, yeah, no. Yeah, no, she got into a verbal... The, the girl got into a verbal display, or tried to wake her up or something. She came and turned the lights on. I was sleeping on the couch. Okay. And said, you're, you're not supposed to be here. Why are you sleeping here? She thinks that it's part of her apartment. Do you have any idea why you're, like, what's going on with your Yale ID? I have no idea. I use it every day to get in and out of everything. What's wrong with her Yale ID? It's coming back. It's fine. She has a key for here. She has a key for here. No, I mean, they, they have her, they have her I'm a first year. How could it expire within nine months? I mean, it's, it's oh, there's an expiration date on it? I don't know if that's expiration or when you got it, but that's... That would have to be when... I don't know. Just, uh, so, but she has... She has not the good She's got access here. All right, so what we'll do is... Uh, yeah, what's, 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 what's the question? 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 What's the so just get the information. She says she's with African studies. Mm -hmm. Is there a common room on this floor? Or no, no there so isn't. So that's why you had to go up there? It doesn't matter why. I chose to go up there because I'm a free citizen to do what the hell I want in this okay. building. That I well, this is private property, and we are police officers here. So we are allowed to do our job. So, so continue doing your job. No, we determine who's allowed to be here and who's not allowed to be here. Regardless <laughs> of whether you feel that you're allowed to be here or not, okay? Continue. I mean, that's just bottom line. Continue. I hope that makes you feel powerful. It's not about feeling powerful. Okay. It's about we're going to get down to the bottom. We don't know why you're not in the system. And you're not being very helpful right now. You wouldn't be helpful either if you were woken up and harassed. 
I probably wouldn't be I able to write it. Down to the bottom of what? You got the story. You got into a verbal disagreement with her, and you said no. Is that correct? So how is she harassing you if you're not in a verbal disagreement? Uh, because I was doing my paper and resting, and now I'm here. I understand. So that's harassment. That's not harassment. Okay. Alright, do me a favor. Um, where's your uh, room here? Right here. Alright, she has the key and everything's good to go? She has her key. Alright, give her our, our ID back. Give her a case number. Mm -hmm. Upstairs, we'll do the same with the uh, individual upstairs. And we'll get down to the bottom. So she's in our system. She has an email address, but she's not in the security system. 714. Now let's see how some cops who were caught with no way out behaved. This man decided to make a video about how citizens are treated when they exercise their constitutional rights. He was standing in front of the police station when two cops approached him. The man immediately asked for their names and badge numbers to see if they knew they had to provide them according to the police work policy. Of course, these cops were a real disappointment. They told them to read it off their uniforms if they wanted to know. The man said he was dyslexic and he couldn't read. Only then did the cops identify themselves. One of the cops told the man that he could stay around as much as he wanted, but that he must not enter the police station. Why? Well, the police station has a lobby that's open to the public and anyone could go there anytime. And these cops didn't have a good reason for it, so they started asking the man why he was there. But the cops shouldn't be interested in that at all. It should be enough for them to find out that the man is a citizen exercising his right to film in public. I mean, the First Amendment, right? Seems like these cops hadn't heard of it. Well, I did try to explain to the lady on the desk. Yeah, what's, 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 Do you want to identify yourself, please? Yeah, Fast. You, film yourself. you can film out Fast. here, but you can't you, come inside number. the police station. Pardon? Still. My number's on display. I'm dyslexic. It's all right. 2941. 2678. Thank you. You can come, you can film look, out look, here. Look, 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 you look as though. You seem all right, you. Do you know what? I was just checking you out there to see if you had that union jack on. I mean, I think you've got a bit of a bad attitude, if I'm honest. No, I don't think he has. Right, so you can film that. Cabinet here, doesn't lie, you know, guys. You can't go inside, mate. Of course you sure. can. It's no, a public building. Not inside, it's not. It's not public. Not inside. It is. That's a public it's foyer. Public out here. Public foyer. So under section, in... under section no. 33, right, of the Criminal Justice Act 1972. Mm -hmm. I am here to exercise my yeah. rights. And I'm telling you, I'm yeah. telling you, officer, yeah. under section 33, yeah. 1972, the Criminal Justice Act tells me I can go in there because it's public. All oh, right, yeah, no worries. But you can't feel So your you authority, know. what you think you've got, doesn't trump my right. So is there, any, is there any reason you want it to... It doesn't. Report, report Wait there, I'm talking. I'm right. I don't want a reaction. Do you know what? If, if I'm honest, do you know the reaction I'd like? And this is from the artist, guys, look. This is from the artist. The reaction I'd like is for you to come out. Obviously, you're going to come out on, not challenge, yeah. but you're going to come out and you're going to see, you do, you're, you're, you're going to want to know what's going on, right? No, and I understand that. Here, do you want to, do you want, would you like me to finish? He asked me a question and I said, I'm going to give you the truth, okay, right? So, the reaction I'd like and we expect, hey, yeah, do you want to stay two metres back? Pardon? You want to stay two metres back from our colleague? Yeah. Why? So I'm asking you though, Sergeant, do you want to identify yourself for me, please, as well? I want uh, you to identify yourself. Do you? Yeah. Well, I haven't got a policy that tells me I have to. So, what? No, you haven't, no. So, I was talking to this, this guy, anyway. So, anyway, uh, and you look like you think it's not funny, you know. Right? No, I'm just going to say, but listen, so why we're here, right, is we're exercising our lawful rights. Yeah. <laughs> and what you like, or what you expect, as a person, or a police officer doesn't trump that, mate. Yeah, it's Simple as that, right? I'm just curious why you've come here with your phones recording, right? Can you stand back? So, what it is? There's COVID, right, mate? There's COVID 19. Please stay two metres back and have some, have some respect, like your, like these, co your colleagues have, please. We're giving you, we're giving you. Listen, well, no. I, I go by the government website, mate. Right? Well, you just said you don't recognise that. Don't recognise what? Camera doesn't lie, you know. Camera doesn't lie. So are you recording? Yes. So there, Gwen, right? In your codes of conduct, right? You're supposed to tell us that you're recording. Tells you on the front here, mate. 
Not doesn't tell me I, um, I can't read. I'm dyslexic. I've told you that when you first come. Then another cop claimed they were just curious. Great, but that doesn't mean a person has to explain themselves to the cops just because they're curious. After all, cops are supposed to enforce laws, not their feelings. The man had asked the cops what would happen if he had entered the police station. Their answer will shock you. They claim the man would be arrested because the interior of the police station is private property and he would be trespassing. Then one cop asked the man for his name because they needed to know who was filming around the police station, and this made no sense. Cops shouldn't ask for someone's name just because they're exercising their constitutional rights, only if they've broken the law. After all, do these cops even know what trespassing is? The man was recording all of this to show how some cops misuse their authority, and it's clear that these cops didn't like being on camera and tried to intimidate him, but the man knew his rights and stood his ground. So, do you want to explain why you haven't then? I want you to explain why you're here. Well, what you want and what you're going to get is two different things, because what you're getting from me is nothing at all. But what, I'll, t I'll tell you what, I'll change my mind. And what we, what you can have, right, is you can have this. I'm not breaking the law. So therefore, I don't even have to engage with you, do I? Eh? Especially when you're going to come and start lying. So I'm going to talk to him now again. I'm going to finish my conversation. So please, will you stay two metres back away from my colleague, please? So there is no conversation. You're quite no, what it is, right? So, do you know, no, do you know what? I swear down, it isn't. It isn't. It isn't that, you know. All we're saying, you're more than welcome to stand out here and film to your heart's content. And just don't enter the police station. Okay? No, but we can. No, but no, we can. I've just told you under Section 33 no. of the Criminal Justice Act 1972. We can. And you can't do out about that. So, all right, then, let me ask you the question then. If I go in there, if I go in there, right, if I go in there, and I go in there, what are you going to do about it? I'm coming in with you guys. No, film me. If you come in there, yeah. it's, that's private property. And no, it's I'm, not private I'm withdrawing property. withdrawing your right to be in this you, property. You have to be the public owner. Are you the landowner? I don't think on you are, are you? Chief Constable. Uh, on behalf. On behalf. Oh, of the mate, it doesn't work like that. Yes. You've come across people who know the law. Pardon? So I'm going to walk in there, and you can arrest me and do what you want, and then I'll take you to court for it, you know. Take us to court for And then I'll take you, right? <coughs> Cleveland Place, because mm -hmm. you were representing Cleveland Place, so I'll be taking Cleveland Place to court, because case number two that would be right and then and then i'll take you to court personally right for their uh, public redress how would you like that how would you like them apples what's your name my name's none of your business but well, it is well it's not well, it is well it's not why is it then tell me why what do you want my details for well, why do you want to film me eh? because want to film me? i didn't want to film you you come why? out you approached me you film me in a police station so you're a security threat a security threat are we going yeah. down section 43 be careful, you know, because I will have you. I will have you. I swear to God, I'll have you, man. I'll have you. Lawful redress, personally. And I'll have Cleveland Police, all you're representing as well. Please, I'm telling you. So, just be careful what eggshells you're cracking. Okay. Okay. Are you finished, guys? Not really. I'm coming in there. You're not. I am. You're not. I am. You're not. I bet you're going to do. Will you come in here and uh, I'll arrest you? For what? For trespass. For trespass. Yeah. Trespass, right? I've told you you're not trespass you're is, not is civil for one. Yeah. So how can you? Yeah. How can? How can you? How can you? Tra how can you arrest me for for trespass? It's civil. Boom, boom, boom! He knows that one as well. Unlucky. What's your de details? Yeah. What, what details? What, well, all right then. I'll tell you what then. What do you want my details for? What do you want my details for? Uh, do you think I'd be still outside the police station if I was wanted? Well, possibly. Uh, well, you haven't committed a crime, so you're not getting them? How would you like them apples? Well, how do I know you've not committed a crime? The cops told this man to be careful as if they were hoping that this kind of threat would scare him. However, they were the ones who should have been careful. They not only threatened his constitutional rights, but also showed a lack of knowledge about the law. I mean, what could you expect from a cop who doesn't know the difference between private and public property? The man mentioned that no one had even complained about him, trying to show he understood why the cops might talk to him, even though he had the freedom to record whatever he wanted. One of the cops, trying to be clever, claimed he was a member of the public and was complaining about the man's filming. But if a cop wants to act like a regular citizen, he should definitely leave his badge and find another job before he starts complaining. I mean, he was on duty. His feelings were the least important thing here. All he needed to do was be professional. However, it seems like the man really hurt the cop's feelings because they immediately started to force him to leave. Even though just a few minutes ago, they said he could stay as long as he didn't enter the police station. What, did they decide to change the rules on the spot to suit them? Suspect I have. Be careful, you know. Be careful. You guys got absolutely nothing to do. You might need to be no. careful. No. Uh, I'm always careful, me, mate. I'm always careful. I set out with the intention of not to break the law and stay within the boundaries of the law. I'm always careful, sir. Seems like a bit of a waste of time, doesn't it? Does it? Mm -hmm. 
Do you know what would have been a waste of time? You didn't come out and fucking try and brutalise us, man, with your lies. Swear, and there's no public, guys, there's no public. There's no public, guys. No public, go for it, lock me up then. Lock me up, there's no public, though. There's no public, though, is there? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He's lying, mate. I'm not lying at all, mate. He's lying. You've just said you wanted to come in there because it's public. Yeah, but... And now you're telling us it's not a public area. I didn't say it's not a public area. I said there's no members of public. Doesn't not only is there not... There's no one... There's no complaint. Anyone complaining? Is there anyone complaining? Are you? I'm a member of the public. You can't be offended, mate. You're not your uniform. You're in fancy dress. I'm a member of Unlucky. Unlucky again. Unlucky. You cannot. He cannot. And he cannot be offended. Get on that one. Get on. Get on that one. No, you're not. Not I when you're in that fancy dress. You're not. No, you're not, man. You're a clown. When you're in that, you're a clown. That's what you are. All right. That's what you are, clown. Yeah, yeah. How do you like them apples? That's fine. Or, do, or should, should we change? Them. Should we change it up a bit? With some pears now. If you want to. You want some pears? Yeah. Uh, well, are we then? Let's see what other, other BS. Because uh, I'm not even. Even if I do swear, you can't lock me up. That's and that's again, right? I'll, I, no, you can't. There has to be a complaint for one, and there is no members of the public. So how can you? So, so you're telling me this is a public area? Yeah. Right, so why can't I go in there? So why can't I go in there? Oh, then, not. So why can't I go in there? Is that a public area in there? That's a, that's a police station. Is it a public area? Is that for you there, public? Like, wrong? Not really. Not really. I was going to tell you, but you said... area belongs to Clean Police, so I'm asking you to leave now. Unlucky, man. I'm asking you to leave. I'm saying no. Well, it's open to public on... Certain exceptions, right? And obviously, we've withdrawn. Section 33, no, section 33, I'll repeat it again for you. I will take you to court, you know. I will take you to court, and I promise you that. I promise you, I'm looking you in the eye. I will talk, take you to court, right? For what? Carry on, do what you've got to do, and then we'll decide from there, won't we? Right, so you don't know. But I don't need to go, don't I? Don't I? It depends, it depends what, it depends what powers you want to misuse, doesn't it? Today, it depends what powers you want to misuse today. I'm telling you, you misuse any, any. Of your powers, and I will take Cleveland Police for the second time, right, to court, right, and then I'll come after you personally or whichever one of you, all three years anyway, for uh, lawful redress. So you're for lawful, no, you're no, I will take you to court if you, if you, any one of you. How many cops do you think would quit if they realized they were not above the law and that they don't make the laws, just follow them? Anyway, back to our story. The man lost his patience and started to educate the cops. He explained to them that he was a journalist with the right of freedom of press. The cops were silent the whole time, probably realizing how big a mistake they had made. However, it was too late for that. They should have thought of those things a little bit earlier. The cops had no choice but to turn and leave. The whole situation was almost comical. The cops tried to intimidate the man with threats, hoping he would back down. Instead, they ended up looking foolish and uninformed. As the man watched the cops walk away, he couldn't help but think of how many times similar situations might have played out where people didn't know their rights or felt too scared to stand up. Right? And if you do it, and he, and he allows you, or he, I'll take all three of you. All three of you is not a threat. That's a promise, man. Promise. Are you finished? I'm just getting started, if I'm honest. Right, well, I've asked, you, I've asked you to leave. Say, if you'd have come and approached us properly, right? I've asked you to leave. Are you if, you'd have come, to leave? if you'd have come and approached us properly, right, well, officer, you wouldn't have even got this response, you know. Because do you know why we come here? I'll tell you why we come to places like this, right? right? We come here, right, to see how yous interact with members of the public. And if I'm honest, yous haven't, you, especially you. Especially you. You haven't got, you haven't done very good. Sorry, I can't hear you both of yous. One at a time, please. Yeah, no, and I get that, guys. And I, I also appreciate that yous have got a, a, a dangerous job to do, and I get that. Go on, sorry. Go on, sorry, I wasn't giving you the care to see that. The fact of the matter is, you've turned over but to listen, the police but station. But listen, to Nam 41. Pulled out your cameras and started recording the station, going inside the station, trying to provoke a reaction. No, do you know what I went in the station for? Go and ask her. Go and ask her. And it's on camera. It doesn't lie, right? I went in and said to her, right, I'm coming in to give you the common courtesy. These were my words, man. Right? No attitude. I'm coming in to give you the common courtesy, right? I'm telling you that. We're independent journalists. Well, I am. I'm independent journalist, right? And I'm going to be in the area getting some footage. That okay. was it. That was it. Right. That was it. You didn't need to go inside and tell her that. Well, do you know why you did? Because I thought if we're walking about in a police station, right, yeah. with our um, cameras, right, yeah. it might look a bit suspicious. So if I go in and try and alleviate that, at least they know what we're here for. And then you talk about he was sound off first, but now he, he thinks he's on the stage, right? And 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 you and you though, and you mate, your, your body language and your face I'm and that man. Curious as to why you turned. Yeah, no, but there's ways to communicate, man. And then like when I'm saying you, when I'm saying you like that tongue now for one, right? With that with that expression, right? Anyway, then it gets my back up, man. Whoever you are, because I know you're not going to ID yourself. Um, 
I'm going back inside. Right? Okay. Okay, so you're allowed to video in a public place, you're more than welcome. That's public in there? Like, you know, no, but that's public in there, you know. Listen then, all right then, can I ask you one question then before you go? Yeah, and and yeah, I'll get out of you there, right? Yeah, Why are you saying that we can't come in here when it's public? It is public. It's a police station, mate. Why yeah, but it's public, in? there's no... Why, man. Why if there was members there? of the public in here, I give, wouldn't... Give I wouldn't. Why you want to because we want to see... Because you want to provoke your action, he's got a smile on his face. No, listen. We want to see the upkeep of the building, man. You want to see the upkeep of the building? But if there was any members of the public, I'm being serious with you, if there was any members of the public, right, I wouldn't have come in with a video camera. Why are you interested on the upkeep of the building? Because I pay taxes. Right, OK. And not only that, right, you'd but be surprised. What, what, if you go on, if you go online, you I'm thing. telling you, if you go online, right, you'll be surprised how, how much people are interested in this kind of stuff too. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Till now, for one. Yeah, well, will you do me a favour? Yeah. Do not brutalise any members of the public like that sergeant. He's got it right all over him, man. Because do you know what? We don't need police officers. Yeah, we don't need police officers, but not idiots. This group of cops were very aggressive from the start. And if you're wondering why, the answer will disappoint you. They acted like real tyrants just because someone was taking pictures and filming them. Here's what happened. A man saw a bunch of cops in front of a church and decided to mess with their egos a little bit. Of course, you don't even have to guess that all the cops immediately fell for the provocation. They decided to move toward the man and surround him from all sides. That was very unnecessary. They did this only because they were in large numbers, maybe even around 10 cops. Do you think any of them would act like this if they were alone? Not a chance. They would probably call for backup and then act tough. These cops not only approached the man from all sides, but also violated his personal space, completely ignoring the six-foot distance rule. One of them claimed the man should stop because they wanted to talk to him, and a female cop added that she was curious about why he was filming them and hiding behind a bush. Well, he wanted to provoke them, isn't it obvious? Stop there a no. No? No, why? You just hacked him every strange trying to hide from us, aren't you? Yeah. Well, you can't hide him. Whoa! Oh, don't I mean. Whoa. Yes, just come back round behind the churches, are you? Oh. What's the matter? What are you doing? Stop there for a minute. Hey. What are you doing? Don't be like this. Are you okay? Stay still. No. We just want to speak to you. I can't speak to you. You, you, don't, you can't? No. Why? The strangers. It's dangerous. Whoa. Stay. Why are you hiding behind bushes and escaping us and recording us? Oh? No. Well? You've just been hiding behind the bushes recording my two colleagues and as soon as we come you started acting like you was trying to record the church but we was observing you doing it. Hey, was. You was? You were? Oh, no. You were? Oh, yes, you were. I was going to church. You were? You were? I will. You were skulking behind the bush. You were behind the bush. I was going to church, right? What? I was going to church. What? I was going to church. You were, she was recording my colleague. Well, you can do that. The you can do that. Yeah, but you was hiding trying to do it. No, we're church, right? And when they come round, you then come running back round here. Well, you could do that, right? But what, what are you up to? I'm recording church. What are you up to? I'm recording church. What are you up to? It's all you're hiding. I'm recording church, you know, church. It's all you're hiding now by Friday. No, we're going to get out of the way. Have you had anything to drink? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What's going on? I can't hear you. What's going on? I can't hear you. What's going on? I can't hear you. You could hear me two seconds ago when I was talking to you. I'm recording Twitch. Right. What's going on? Uh, recording. But why are you why are you hiding and Not hiding. Us? Uh, it's raining. It's raining. But you was hiding from us. No, not you. You was. These cops were dumb enough to take the bait right away. The female cop claimed they knew he was filming them, but that when they approached him, he pretended to be filming the church. For their information, he can record both the cops and the church. He's in the public and he can record and take pictures of whatever he sees. The man really played with their feelings and said he was hiding behind the bush because it was raining. The cops knew they looked stupid on camera, but their egos wouldn't let them stop there. Since it wasn't clear to the female cop why the man was hiding behind the bush, he jokingly said he wanted to be like Moses and come out of the bush. If you need a recipe for making cops angry, just follow what this guy did. Don't these cops have anything better to do than figure out the mystery of why the man was hiding behind the bush? They acted as if they had nothing more important to do than to deal with a guy filming them. Not you. When we came around the corner, yes. you were hid behind that bush. I recording. Filming my colleagues. Recording church. And when you saw us, you started recording. I recording church, church, right? Well, initially. I was recording. I was recording church, right? I was. I can record. 
You can record what you want. It's well, your legal right to record what so you want. So why is she saying I can't? Hey, she's saying you can't. She said I can't record church, right? That you cannot record. Also, you, 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 you can record right. whatever you I'm want. Why you were hiding. Because Moses was in the bush once, right? You know Moses? Why we hiding down Friday? You know Moses? I'm asking you a question what, about the Bible? Friday. Yes. Yeah. Moses come from the burning bush, right? Yeah. I wanted to be in the wet bush. Ah, right. You didn't want to be the burning no, bush. No. Why are you hiding down again all the time? Where's Firewood? Oh, man. Uh, I just get, get out of Wayne, you know. Yeah. Don't like you were hiding. Yeah, I get out of Wayne, you know, because it's Wayne, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know. You been watching the football? I am, you know, uh, uh, just recording church, you know. Yeah, yeah. Do you like recording things? I, rec I record. Like yeah, ch churches, bushes, you know. Where are you from? From Preston? Uh, uh, where am I from? Yeah. Where are you from? From Preston. Really? Yeah. How do you know? I said, I'm from Preston. Where are you from? I said, how do you know that? How do I know where I live? Yes. I can remember it. Do you, know, do you live next door to your neighbour? Say again? Do you live next door to your neighbour? No. How do you know? Because there's no houses next to my house. Isn't it? Are you okay? I'm okay. You're actually rather strange. We're a bit concerned about you. Well, I don't be concerned for me. Well, we, we are concerned. That's our job. I'm recording. We are recording as well. So it's not a problem. Don't be like that, my friend. Yeah. You can record as much as you want. I know. I'm not committing no crimes, you know. You can record whatever you want. Why? Because you're not acting quite normally. What's your name? My name? I do want my name. Uh, yes. Okay. Do you have any ID on you? No, I've got my name. You know? Yes. No? Yes. The other female cops started asking the man for his ID. However, he refused knowing he hadn't done anything wrong. The man then said he would leave, but the first female cop told him he couldn't go. Did that mean he was detained? These cops claimed it wasn't even that. It was obvious they didn't know what they wanted. Another cop then asked the man if he was drunk and if so, whether he drank a large bottle or a small one. I can't believe it was easier for them to stand there making up one reason after another to waste the man's time instead of just turning around and walking away, or at least ignoring him and continuing what they were doing before he showed up. Yes. Can we have a look? No, thank you. <laughs> Pardon? I do not like to give, you know. You're surrounding me. No. no. There's a big gap behind you. There's plenty of room. Can I go? Just wait a minute for us. Oh, I'm free to go, right? No, I didn't say you Am I being detained? No. No? Okay, I'm free to go then, right? Right. Where are you? I'm free to go if I'm not detained, right? Do you want to be detained? No. She said I can't go. If the officer said you can go, you can go. Can we just politely ask that you wait for other food? I can politely decline, just my politely. friend. No, okay, my friend. I got, I got places to go. I got another pint to drink, you know. Have you had a few already? Uh, two. The two big ones, two little ones? No, two John Smiths, you know. All right. Yes. Are you on medication as well? Pardon? Are you on medication as well? No, no, no. Are you on your own now? Are you, Pardon? Are you, are you out on your own today? No, I'm with my dog. Where is your dad at the minute? My dog. You're with your dog? Yes. Yeah. Where is your dog? It's here, <laughs> yes. You can't see me, dog. Us? I think you're winding us up. No, I just want to, I want to get sectioned on the mental health. You want to get sectioned? Uh, well, it looks like that way, because you, you, you think I'm mental. I never said You're that. asking me so, so many strange questions, you know. Are you behaving strangely? Yes, it's strange. What, to just act the way I like? Uh, uh, in a bush? A standard question. So we are concerned about you. Right. Do you want to be sectioned? You mentioned that we didn't. Yes, but my friend, the way you ask questions, it's as if I'm mental, you know. No, you don't. I have not caused you no you harm. No I have not caused any members of public harm today. And all of a sudden, you're concerned about me. Yeah. So that's the reason why I go you're mental health. Strange. That's why we're concerned about Yes, you. but I'm not causing no crimes, right? No, you're no not. No public right, yeah. nuisance. You've got to see from our point of view. What is it? Right, so the point of view is... Yes. You are skulking behind a bush. Yes. Filming police officers. And we can do that, by the can I ask you why you're doing it? Uh, sit, sit. This cop assumed the man was mentally ill and asked if he had taken his medication. Another cop claimed they were just worried about the man and then asked why he was doing that. The best answer they got was because he can do it. Matt even explained he was a free journalist and wanted to make his own reports and today he was reporting on bad cops. However, the cops returned the same argument, claiming the man was doing something wrong because he was hiding behind a bush. It's interesting that these cops joined forces to scare a man, but one man outwitted the whole group of 10 cops. Take this man as a guide and never give up your civil rights no matter how many cops you encounter. The man's persistence paid off. He didn't let the cops' intimidation tactics get to him. He knew his rights 
and wasn't afraid to exercise them. His experience serves as a reminder to all of us to stand firm in the face of unnecessary aggression and always be aware of our rights. Despite the absurdity of the situation, the man's resolve and knowledge turned it around, making the cops look foolish and overzealous. This isn't journalism. Hang on. Are you an auditor? Pardon? Are you an auditor? What's one of them? Right. What accounts? <laughs> it's wider, right? Yeah, the penny's dropped, hasn't it, my friend? The penny has really dropped. She was ready to detain me then. What happens if a man's got speech impediment, right? You just failed the task. You thought I was mental. No, no, you you thought I was mental. Please don't put words into our mouth. But you thought we, I was. No, we didn't say Do you need help? We Why do I need help? I didn't call you for help. What police have to do to help people? What? For, did I call for help? That no, my you friend. Turn it round a little bit. No, Your no, I can't turn it round. Guys, actions. you see me in a bush, right? Yeah. Therefore, what's, can you be in a bush? You can, can't you? <laughs> See, it's, the penny has literally dropped. YouTube. I'm glad you have. And lady, please. He's a YouTuber, isn't he? That's it. Right. Anyway. Accounts. I don't do accounts. No, no, but you were skulking in a bush filming. People. I wasn't sk skulking. Yeah, but I can film you from in a bush. You were just going, right, so you're saying you're not doing nothing wrong. I wasn't. What you know I weren't. What did you say you was? You was no. getting back up to come here. Right, to see if there's anything we can do. Because, hear me out. Yeah. If you were the member of the public. Right. And somebody was running around. I went running though. Never running. Okay. Never once run. You did. Never once run. Because as my colleague got to the other side of the church, I seen you run back round here, then go behind the bush and start recording. Not but run, not let run me, though. Let me finish. You're lying though. Do not lie. Let, let me let finish. finish. No, no, I won't let her finish. If she right. lies, I'll let interrupt. We'll give, you your, we'll give you your chance. So, to miss, to never lie again. You didn't see me run once. Let's just go. She's the boss. Guys, follow this lady. Because she said, just go. You She's your boss. You she just lied and said, I run. I never run. Listen, love, jog on. I didn't run once. Deliberately baited. Now we're talking about one cop who turned on his emergency lights to get to this man who was taking pictures and filming around. When the man asked him what the emergency was, the cop only replied that what he was photographing was an emergency. The cop acted like it was a crime. The only thing this cop did well was identify himself and inform the man that he was being filmed by a body camera. But that's pretty much where his competence ended. The fact that he turned on his blue lights just to reach a man taking pictures in public says a lot about what kind of cop he really is. The cop claimed he needed to know the man's name and why he was filming. However, the man knew he was protected by constitutional law because he had done nothing wrong, so he decided to tell the cop that. Cops must understand that not all citizens are unaware of their civil rights and their tyrannical behavior won't go unnoticed every single time. It's simple. Whenever cops see people out in public with a camera, all they have to do is just keep their cool. This cop even tried to threaten the man with arrest for obstructing the police, but that didn't work in his favor either. Every good cop knows that obstructing the police is a secondary crime, and no one can be arrested for it unless they are committing another one. I seem to have a chat with you, sir. What's the emergency? Sorry? What's the emergency? Say that again, sir. What's the emergency? The emergency is that somebody's been taking some photos of Oh my god, no point. way. Is that a crime? Sorry, sir. Can I have your details, please? You can have my details, sir. That's not a problem. What do you Just mean? Just so you know, sir, my body worn camera is good. Man, well done. In time. Right. Okay, it's seven double eight zero. That's all I need to tell you at this stage. You don't want to give me your name, no. No, I don't. I'm not required. Okay. To, sir. Well, then, don't be asking mine for any point, then. Okay. Okay. Right, what do you want to say? That's really how it works, sir. Isn't it? Come on. Please. Shit or get off the pot. What have you got to say? There's no need to swear, is there? Because we're in a public place, and I don't expect. Shit, not swear. Word is in Shakespeare. I don't expect you to use foul language. Let's get on with it. You just pulled me up on blue lights yep. and suggested to me that I'm a criminal. So let's crack on with it. So I didn't say you were Why are you on blue lights? I didn't say you were a criminal. What do you want? That's how it's been graded. Tell me what you want. Right. So I would like to find out who you are firstly. Okay. Well, that's not going to happen, is it? And why you're taking photos of a military establishment. And where are your friends? Oh, here they are. Just the three of you. Who are you waiting for more backup? Well, back up for what, sir? For me, it's obviously three. Does it need three of you? Well, no, but we're in the area. I've got a camera. We're in the area of the time. So <laughs> okay, all right. Units, so you they? both come on blue lights, did you? They sent. They right. Sent what do you want? Response, You're not they? getting my name. I don't have to tell you what I'm doing because I'm protected by Human Rights Privacy Act. Okay, Article Eight. That's okay. I'm not doing anything unlawful. I've never left the public footpath. No. no it's not against no, the law what no I'm one's doing. Saying you are, but you shouldn't be taking pictures of a military establishment. Wrong. Really, are you? Wrong. Be careful what you say to me, because if you start giving me directives, you can take it through a gate if the gate has mesh on it.
If they don't want people taking photographs through the mesh, then what they do is they put planks on there. But your, your action could be considered... So no, don't go down that road. Don't go down that road, because then I will ask you for more evidence. I'll ask you for credible and current intelligence that would suggest that. And you wouldn't be able to provide anything, would you? All you've got at the moment is a member of the public with a camera. Mm -hmm. We have. So, so what do you want to do raised, about it? They've obviously raised. I don't care what they say. Stage, I don't, don't care. Their jurisdiction is in there. I don't give a because shit. Because we don't know who you are. Oh, well, do I, we? so what? I don't know who you are now, do I? Well, you do. So I'll just give. You, you haven't given me your name. I don't. Well, give us your driving license. Let me know who you are and where you live. I'm not required to. I'm not required to give you mine. But you are if I think you're committing a criminal offence. What's the offence? At this stage... I'm What's the offence? At this stage... We're What's the offence? What's the offence? Well, I want to know who you are. What's the offence? Then I tell you what, once you've got the offence, then you can have my name. I'm asking you to stop and account for your actions, sir. <laughs> I don't account for a lawful activity, and neither should anybody. Tell me the offence, and I'll give you my name. Detain me or arrest me, and I'll give you my name. I'm not arresting you, am I? Because I don't know whether there's okay. offence being committed. Well, then why, why are you coming here on blue lights and talking to me? I think we're done, aren't we? Sir, are down there chatting with the people. No, they're not. They're behind you. No, they're not. There's two different. There's two or three. There's three cars, cars here. here. There's another car down there. Isn't for there? God's sake! The base, isn't there? <laughs> You've got Find three cars here for a photographer. I'm a detained. Sorry. I'm a detained. I'm not detained you at the moment. See you later. All right. A few minutes later, a whole van of cops showed up. Now imagine you're a citizen who needs the cops because they feel something bad has happened, but there are no free cops to come to the scene. Well, if you're wondering why, this is your answer. Look at how many cops showed up because of a man who did absolutely nothing wrong. These cops now felt powerful in their numbers, so they kept insisting that the man must understand he was a security risk for everyone because he was filming. However, there's no law that says this. Another cop even mentioned terrorism, which was really over the top. This guy was just filming around, and the cops tried to link it to terrorism. Did they really have to go to such extremes because they can't think of anything smarter? Okay. Afternoon, ladies. Afternoon. What are we on? What are we on? What are we on today? Are we working or are we just sitting around? Uh, oh, we're always working. Yeah, oh, good, good man. Yeah, how are you? Fantastic. Yeah, Wonderful, good. actually. Yeah, nice day. It is, isn't it? Yeah, not bad at all. You having a good day? It's going right, actually. Taking pictures of you. It's at the MOD Centre. That's yeah. right, yeah. Anything in particular or? Everything. Everything. Oh. Yeah. Let's get a shot, yeah? Yeah. 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 Okay. What's it you like about the sort of TA centres? Oh, I didn't say I liked it. What's that? I didn't say I liked it. You didn't oh. like it? Is no, I don't think you take a photo, you've got an interest of something, haven't you? Well, I don't mean to say I like it. Oh, I know, but an interest. I'll take a picture of my kids, but I don't like them. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. Fair enough. But, uh, yeah, so we just, that's all we're going to report of. Give them a wave. Let me, let me crew. Oh, yeah, your <laughs> fans, are they? <laughs> Give us a wave! Right, what are we doing? Well, I'm I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a busy man. Can't be standing around talking to you three all day. And I know you've got a McDonald's to go to. Oh, no. The only reason we've come out here is obviously we're Ministry of Defence Police. Right, someone, well done. Someone cited you, oh, someone can't do it. Someone yeah. cited you down at the uh, Army Reserve Centre. Hold on. Get us out here. Yeah. Now, so, again, how many have come out? One, two, three, so four, here because we're the five, six. Seven officers come out. Four oh, on camera. It, it's four. The and it could have been an ambush because it could have been two cameras. Well, wait, it is two cameras. You've got one on oh, your you're right, it is, yeah. Oh, yeah. And one there. Yeah, no, And one on the other side. Four cameras. Oh, okay, we're here. Because yeah. Because one is your report of the mail to get over the Fantastic. establishment. So what crime is that? that it's all, all fine. What so crime is that? Oh, there is no crime. You're in a public domain and you can take photos. That, we're not I like you. That. Um, again, for us, it's a security risk. Is we're it? here to engage with people. Now, we're not yeah. here to stop you from doing it, but we'll always so ask why people are here and you don't have to answer our questions either. But that's but, just, just as well, because I'm not. And that's the thing. But obviously, as you'll appreciate, with the modern ter uh, terrorist climate, we have to be careful around modern establishments. Really? We have to come out here. And especially with the Ministry of Defence Police, that's kind of our remix. Keep these sites protected. Why do you say under the modern terrorism? It's always been the same. It's always been the same for like the last hundred years, hasn't it? But it has been, but unfortunately... 120 years, actually. Not completely free, but now it's doing more fibre and technology, babe. Yeah. Cameras, photos, bits and pieces. Again, you can do your reconnaissance online, then come down here and first. Exactly. What we're here... One cop asked the man if he had a YouTube channel, as if that mattered at all in this situation. Maybe the cops had planned to act differently if there was a chance they would end up on YouTube. Even these cops don't want everyone to see how badly they really behave. As the cops continued their baseless questioning, the man remained steadfast. He knew they were trying to find any excuse to make him stop, but he wasn't breaking any laws. Yeah, or not come down here. You could just do it online and not come down here, couldn't you? And we just want to show that there is a reaction. If you people yeah. drop up here and they have any horrible intention, we turn up. Yeah. And if you come and if you teach them online, yeah. I don't know what you're going to do with them. Anyone that is doing any reconnaissance, football suddenly go, oh, I've taken two pictures, then all these police dropped up. Yeah. It's the greatest way to deter people. Are you coming to yeah.
Okay, yeah, we got to drive. He's got an easy job, hasn't he? Yeah, he just drives I think, around. Try to stay awake, mate. But um, do you have a YouTube channel at all? Or I don't answer questions like that. <laughs> I just wonder if, I, if I'm going to end up on YouTube. I might be. You probably will be if you just type in three handsome guys, Plymouth. So that's, that's, that's what it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> it was the other three I've talked to, actually. It was... <laughs> oh, cheers. Oh. No, I'm only kidding. Now, I'll ask, and again, I'll just say, you don't yeah. have to answer my question, but would I better get your name off you at all? No, why would you want to? Why would you want to collect intelligence on a member of the public? You never joined up. You never said to your mum and dad, I'm going to join the police, mum, because you know what I want to do? I want to go to people that aren't breaking the law and collect data on them so they can go on the, the, the National Police computer, and then what they can do is they can be part of all the misconduct hearings that we get every month where they're paid up predominantly police abusing the, the, the National Computer. Does that answer your question? No, yeah, mate, as I said, you don't have to answer your question. Okay. Uh, next thing I'll ask. Oh, I have. So, uh, yeah, how's it going? That's it, though, I'll expect that. Okay. Next thing I'm going to ask, are you likely to give any of the modern establishment to make any further fix of today? Um, because if you are, I will pass your description over. So well, that's no good, is it? If you won't get this sudden reaction, but I don't want to impact your day by restricting your liberty by stopping you constantly. You don't. You provide me with consent. Okay, that's fine. The worst thing would have been if you'd have just ignored me. If you'd have turned the other way, which is the story of my life, really. You'd have just driven past and would have been like two chips in the night. Yeah. It would have been awful. For me, it's just engaging with people. I may be friendly, or this is friendly. I am. Again, unfortunately, there is some kind of clash of personalities between people, but I'm here to be professional, and I don't want that to get in the way. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm not here to stop you, but I am here to engage with you. How do you get that cut on your nose? Has somebody hit you there? No, it's because of my face mask. I oh, I see, there. right, okay. I'm a relatively charming person, but yeah. I can't okay. face. Right. Now, the mask on. Yeah. <laughs> That's you feeling up as well. Even after COVID's over, they're going to keep you wearing the mask, aren't they? Hide my ugly mug, is that fine? Um, <laughs> I hate this, you know, when somebody walks away and goes, uh, yeah, um, yeah, control, no, control yeah. yeah. The man counted seven cops around him. In their heads, it probably felt like they were dealing with the biggest criminal. But one thing was certain, none of these cops expected to be outmatched by a man who knew the law better than they did. One of the cops even said on camera they weren't doing anything wrong and they were just doing their job. I have no doubt that most of them actually thought they were doing their jobs properly, but all they did was make their department look even more desperate on camera. What's going on there? No, not so. Okay. okay. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a well-known routine. You go all around the country, do you? Oh uh, no, I'm I'm working down here, so I thought I'd just come and have a look around while I'm here. Yeah, fair enough. How long are you down here for? Um, oh, that'd be answering questions, wouldn't it? You know, oh, no. oh, you're a weasel, you are. Yeah, I can see what you're doing. You're weaseling your way in. Well, it's likely if you're going to get another call from Wellington, aren't you? Well, listen, next time you come, bring some at work. You know, bring something to the party. Yeah? Bring some chocolates or donuts or whatever. Oh, Covid time's fucked You, you think you don't like you eat donuts, though? Not, not, not as much as me. Yeah, thank you. Right, later, yeah. <laughs> So what are we doing today, guys? What time are you on till? Well, we're time to finish, really. We're yeah. out about all day. Doing our process. Now listen, I, there's a rumour going round that what happens is, um, if you're on till, say, 2 o'clock, you find a little job at about 10 to 2 that will take you to 20 past 2, and then you'll be in overtime. Is that right? Does that ever happen? I can't I mean, well, if we see something happening in the corridor, we need to act on it, we have to act on it, don't we? Right. So, uh, it was another couple that, that said that. Yeah. He said what he used to do is, just near to him coming off his shift, he used to find somebody on the street who was bound to have a little bit of cannabis on them, and then, <laughs> because he was fast and done with and over, it just took him over. Is it 15 or 16 minutes, is it, over the hour that you, you get overtime? Uh, of course. We've got to do a bit longer than that. Oh, right, okay. Well, obviously we can't find a lot of officers to do, but if it's great crime, then it's doing something on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perhaps that's what he was doing, he was just being vigilant close to his, his time off. Yeah. Who knows? But you've got a good old setup there, haven't you, on that camera? It's nice, isn't it? Can't be cheap. But, no, um, but they're, they're doing away with them. Oh, with yeah. the DSLRs, getting rid of them, so this is probably going to be the last ones. Uh, on the line. Would you say that would be worth a lot of money? No, I, I, I don't actually. I'm a bit of a hoarder. Yeah. I've got all sorts of... I've, I have about 20 phone leads at home <laughs> that will never ever be used again. But I, I just can't throw them out. Just in case. You, you must be the same. Yeah, I've got some stuff there. Have now. you got your man draw? My <laughs> wallet of rubbish. Awesome, the man draw. Yeah. I've got one of those. But like, like I say, not doing anything wrong. Probably. Okay. But, um, probably see you around if you can be around a while. For yeah. Photos. Yeah. Hope you get some good shots. Yeah. Enjoy. Um, now, the only thing I request from you, the only thing I want from you, is that the army person now, we're all up in arms doing this and through the gate and demanding to know, now I know their jurisdiction is, is, is constrained to, to the premises that they're on, 
Well, it is a little bit annoying because they put up a mesh fence and they put light trucks in there that need photographing and then they whinge at you when you do it. Now, then people are being employed by my money yeah. to fight for my rights. So when they then phone the police and you all come out, because it's a waste of police time um, when you come out, it, it, it's not good. You know, the, the you fact. Doing your I was wearing this, yeah, I was wearing my Covid mask. You might see as a threat. If you turn your own wearing your better car up, it's sort of like, well, why is he wearing that? Because no, no. You know, it's not paid. The man explained to them that coming as backup to a cop whose ego was hurt was not a good look. People won't trust or want to pay taxes for cops who waste time and resources on nonsense just to back up a colleague with a bruised ego. Cops should help citizens, not their fellow cops with wounded pride. In the end, it seemed like these rookie cops realized they had made a mistake. They tried to have a conversation with the man to explain their motives for coming, but that wasn't enough. Cops should think about these things ahead of time. The man's calm and informed approach highlighted how misguided the cops' actions were. They probably thought they were handling a serious threat, but instead they were just embarrassing themselves. The man's knowledge of his rights in the law put them in a tough spot, exposing their overreaction and lack of understanding. Well, we're going to correct you on that by saying there are plenty of videos pre-COVID where similar things have happened, so it's nothing to do with the mask. Yep. It's a little bit like when somebody phones, when somebody films the back of the police station, and the police come out and say you're suspicious filming the back of the station, and then you realise that it would, same thing would happen if you film in the front. Yeah. It, but you know, we're going to find out. That's why we're here to engage to find out if you're is suspicious okay. or if you're just taking your interest in what happens. That's what we're uh, worried about. Is this the cavalry? Uh, no, this is the Denver Formal Unit. They're probably just finding out. Oh, is this the first guy I talk with? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Listen, guys. It's been great. It's been great talking to you. YouTube or wherever you put it. Yeah. Have a good day. Stay safe. Let's get a shot of that as well. What are you now? Servitors? Project Servitors. It's a national initiative, it's rolling out across the country. Oh, yeah, yeah. See something, say something, do now. Is that it? Well, what's they do now? <laughs> it's, it's, it's trying to build that public engagement again. Anything you want to talk to us, engage us about. We're there, on mass, we're flooding area with high visibility problems at random times of the day, random locations. It's a local thing, it's a local crime, and it just builds up the intelligence and which I think we're just sadly lacking. Because unfortunately, I'd agree. Unfortunately, the relationship between the police and the public has degraded over it's the last terrible. couple of years, and COVID has made that worse, in yeah. my opinion. But we're here to try and build it better. Let's just engage Why people. do you think it's bad? I think it's the perception, unfortunately. Well, it's um, not the perception, because it's like on every inquiry that is held regarding the police comes out with you looking like shit. Yeah. Not you two, but the police. So it can't be perception. People every week... Oh, don't they? Rather every, than yeah, we well, have to. And every, every, every week there is a headline, and it's either the, it's, it's, you know, the worst is the way in court, and court, you've got the, the paedophiles, you've got the... It, there's all sorts, every week. It's a small minority, and I mean small minority, ruining it for the rest of us. We're in a position of trust, and they're breaking that trust, so that is a difference. Well, we're trying to explore, you know, that fact from the public, but yeah. people like that have actually just smashed everything that we've built, yeah. and they've just made it, you know, hard work for us. Because people that come to talk to us, we miss a lot of stuff. By just talking to people, you might feel like intelligence or get information that can help you with something. You're not getting a good, good sort of information that you can act on, yeah. and that's how we can deter crime. So that's what we're trying to do, just get out of these areas, talk to people, look at people, yeah, they're, they're trying to avoid us, yeah, we'll pick up on them as well. And they usually need a reason for them avoiding us. So mainly it's trying to get that, that, that trust of people coming up to us. They're going to call us, they're coming out and chat with us if they want. So, well, you two have been there. great with me, so um, I'm going to leave you in peace. Yeah. And um, uh, the one thing I'll warn you, just before you go, oh. um, mm. the, if you do go to the mod sites, yeah. the Ministry of Defence Police, we are, as we are part of the unarmed asset, yeah. we are quite flexible. You may yeah. bump into us again. We're not tracking you, we're not following you, but if you go to another mod site and it raises the alarm for them and they contact the police, okay. they may find that we just end up rocking up. Right. It's just because we are the available asset that we've got today. We'll have a chat with them as well. So. Alright, so will you relay that information back to the army as well? And. Um, and I'll crack on. Yeah. And I'll go and find another uh, MOD base. <laughs> See, See you later, guys.